When the decision is made to physically restrain a patient, you are facing one of the most dangerous and unpredictable events experienced in the hospital. You must work as a team, with each member focused on their responsibilities. The team leader is positioned at the head of the bed in order to communicate with the patient. In this position, the leader is also able to monitor the patient's stress reaction by observing facial expression. All other members should avoid eye contact with the patient. They are responsible for controlling the limbs. Once the upper body is under control, each team member holding the arms needs only to control the arm from the shoulder downwards. The most physically challenging task is to control the legs. In the initial contact, the legs need to be immobilized and held only until assistance from other team members is available. There are several methods for securing the legs, as illustrated here. Pinnell does not recommend any particular method, but does caution against excessive force that could cause joint injury. If possible, the team leader should position the torso control belt even before the patient is placed onto the stretcher. This belt can assist in dragging the patient to the head of the bed or stretcher. In preparation, the team leader folds the ends of the torso control belt so that it can be easily tossed over his shoulders. Aim to place the white tab at the center of the strap into the nape of the neck. Toss the loose ends over the patient's shoulders. Reach under the patient's armpits and pull the straps backwards. If needed, use knee pressure with your full body weight to pull the patient backward. Once the patient's shoulders are on the mattress, ease off pressure on the clavicles just enough to prevent the patient from sitting up. Use a leverage point to double your holding power. This hold is patient-friendly and requires little pressure on the clavicles. It also assists the patient to breathe by keeping the chest open. Pressing the shoulders flat into the mattress dissipates the patient's energy rapidly and prevents head attacks for butting or biting. It allows staff members to focus only on the patient's arm strength. With only a team of four, the team leader needs to wrap the first wrist. To do so, the leader must first wrap the torso control belt behind the patient to prevent the patient from lifting. The leader can do this by wrapping the straps into a temporary knot or by securing the end straps with a lock. The leader, using Velcro, wraps the first wrist while it is held securely by the other staff member. Unlike traditional restraints, the wrist does not need to be forced into a fixed cuff. The wrist can be easily entrapped by the one-way butterfly Velcro cuff while the limb is still moving. Once one arm is secured, both team members proceed to the other limbs and assist in securing the other arm and then both legs. After all four limbs are secured, raise the side rails and proceed to adjust the limb cuffs for optimal contact. Remove any jewelry or clothing underneath the cuff. Should you perceive a risk that the patient may break the Velcro hold, Pinnell recommends supporting the Velcro with the overlapping straps. This is particularly true with the ankles, where there is less overlapping Velcro to hold very powerful legs. The patient is now secure on the stretcher. This gives clinicians the opportunity to discuss the patient's condition and next actions. If the strategy is to sedate the patient, a team member can pull the short strap across the patient's body to present a still arm muscle site for injection.